Hello, I'm Jennifer Harold, and today we're going to talk about restraining guitars. First, it's very important that you make your guitar feel as comfortable as possible. This shirt's okay, but let's try a few more options. Depending on if you're playing acoustic or electric, this might be an okay option. However, today, I'm going to be restraining one of my electrics. So, Robert Johnson might not be the best fit. So, we have a Fender shirt, which is fine, good. But, you know, it depends because Fender makes a lot of different things. And honestly, your guitar might feel like you don't think it's very special. So this might be too generic. This is getting closer, but, you know, check it out, Hendrix. I might be a little scared that you're gonna set it on fire. So, let's try something else. So, we're trying on the CV shirt. Now, CV, amazing, of course. However, a couple things. So, guitar might be a little scared that you're gonna start making it all about you, you know, what about me, whatever. Eh, very valid concern. Also, this guitar shirt is a little ill-fitting. It's kind of sloppy and, you know, you will kind of want to treat uh, your guitar to a nice time. So, let's try something else. Alright, now we're talking. So, let's check this out. Uh, here, we have a Fender Stratocaster that looks very similar to the one that I'm going to be restringing today. He's going to be very pleased. And also, I have taken it upon myself to decorate this in beautiful tie-dye fashion. So, let's, uh, let's go to the next step. Next step, what is this? What are we doing? Not going to brush your hair? Why are we wearing glasses? Uh, Payon's not gonna be pleased, so let's go fix this. So, here we go. Brush hair, contacts in, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. So now it's time to go get the guitar. Well, here he is. Oh, what's that, Mr. Payon? Oh, turns out guitars like a little fragrance. Who knew? So here he is. It's time to get down to business. First steps, first step, create a little sound that goes, hold on, very important. If the string does not go, you're doing it wrong, you're turning it the wrong way. You must make that sound. So at this point they should all go, and you know, that's how you know it's time to do a little snipping, a little clipping. So let's go ahead and do that. You could do multiple at a time, it's fine. Oh, that's not good. Because being one with you is the, the guitar's number one priority. Use the same spray on the neck as you did on your neck. So, we go, spritz, spritz, spritz. And then, wipe, wipe it down. Oh, it's gonna be nice and clean. Oh, look at that, there's a picture of us together. And then next, we do a little secret of mine, which is take steel wool all the frets and polish them. So you do that to all of them and they'll be nice and shiny. Just make sure to cover up all the electronic parts so your seal wool doesn't flake off and get stuck to the pole pieces because that's no good. What does that do? That reduces your signal uh, over time and just kind of makes a mess. Next step in this is important if you have a rosewood neck, excuse me, if Sir has a rosewood neck. So, we take a little bit of oil. Um, I use almond oil because it makes my guitar smell like donuts. Uh, you can use lemon oil 
or whatever, you know, any kind of furniture oil, and just do this. You take it and you run it down the neck like this. It's kind of blip, blip, you know. And then you take a paper towel and just uh, run it all over the neck. Make sure it gets evenly spaced. And then uh, I guess just wait a minute and also I'll just come outside and see what Otis has to say and do for a little while. And uh, we'll give us some time to let that oil sink in. What are you doing? He's doing nothing. Now, depending on the last time that you oiled your neck, uh, this oil may be sitting on top or it might sink in like right away. And by right away, I mean like, you know, two, three minutes. So um, if that happens, just apply another coat. And um, yeah, so now it's time to remove this coat. So you just kind of want to scrub everything with the frets. Now look at how dirty that is. <laughs> That's impressive. But I mean, it's not rare because, you know, hands, strings, all kind of corrosion happens. So we'll just do this. I'll spare you the uh, details and I'll be right back. So it's important to note that if you don't have a rosewood neck or um, a fret a fretboard that has, you know, grains in it, like uh, if it's ebony or if it's maple, don't do this. Because all you're going to do is waste oil and it's just going to set on top of your fretboard and kind of make it too slippery. So what I would recommend instead of this step is if you just want to take polish and spray it and then, you know, kind of work um, along with the frets in, in the similar fashion, you know, to remove the, the dirt and the grime and everything like that. Um, yeah, so don't do this for anything other than rosewood. Next steps that I do is, um, so all of that oil has a tendency to um, pull around on the back of the neck. So you want to take some cleaner and just clean that off and just wipe that off and that should be nice and you know not oily <laughs> might have to do this uh, with two hands but yeah so we'll do that the next step um, something that I know that a lot of people don't do, and this is actually kind of important if you want to prolong um, your string life, um, especially if you leave your strings on for a while and whatever. Um, so something that I've done for a very long time is you just want to take a pencil, it's hard to do <laughs> through the phone, uh, take a pencil and put some graphite in these nut slots. I know, haha, ha, very funny. Uh, that's something that you want to do. And what that does is it lubricates that so that your strings don't get stuck in there. Because a lot of times you'll have string breakage up here prematurely, and it's because there's burrs and whatever, or, you know, um, actually the burrs usually happen down here. And you can, you can do actually the same thing. Um, on the saddles. Just take some graphite and uh, you know kind of work that in there. I usually use a number two pencil, um, mechanical pencil, but uh, this is also doubles as my art room so I just uh, found whatever art pencil. So that's a very important step to do and then next uh, we'll just put the strings on. So my favorite are going to be these 11 through 50 GHS boomers. This isn't a plug for them because they uh, are not sponsoring me at this time, but maybe they will. Anyway, yeah. So um, I love these because they are not super bright and tinny right out of the package like a lot of strings are. They're comfortable to play. Um, they don't hurt your fingers. Uh, just, and they're very long lasting as far as, you know, string life goes. Uh, things can get a little weird during the Texas summers, but, uh, my last set I had on for 
I don't know, two or three weeks before I needed to change them, and I gig quite often. So I've gone ahead and put the strings on the guitar, and uh, basically tuned it up. Now, something that is very important is to make sure that you just stretch the strings. You want to yank them, just yank on them violently. <laughs> and then, when you're done with that, tune it up again. So, and what that does is make sure that, uh, you know, you don't have any excess strings kind of hung up in wherever they get hung up, like, uh, you know, especially strats and stuff have channels that sometimes they, those ball ends can get stuck in there or whatever. And if you pull on them, it kind of seats them into place. And then you don't have problems with it popping out. And of course, the final step is to make sure that you and your Stratocaster, or whatever guitar you've restrung today, hang outside and enjoy the beautiful weather and have a drink before your next show. Thanks for watching. Me, Payon, and Otis hope that you have found something useful out of this video today.